In this video, I'm going to talk about creating a new file inside of GIMP, but also to as far as saving the working file, working with the published file, and then we're going to actually tie this into Unity as far as 2D game design and development. So we're actually going to be working with two software packages. If you don't have Unity installed, just so you're aware, Unity is free to download and practice with. So some things that I've done here is first off, I did make a 2D game environment called Asset Demo in Unity. We're going to come back to that in a moment whenever we talk about saving and where to save our files from GIMP. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize out from that and go back into GIMP. And I'm going to do File and Create a New File here. Now I'm going to zoom in here for a second so folks can see. When you're ready to create a new image, you have a lot of different options here. I don't need something that's 1920 by 1080, so I'm going to go ahead and say 512 by 512. If you know you are strictly working on a computer screen and it's not going to be printed, you do have a drop down menu here for pixels. However, you can see you also have inches, millimeters, etc. Really, depending on what I'm working on, mainly for screen resolution, I work with pixels. If I am going to print, I will go to either inches, points, or picos, uh, depending on what I need to work with. The other thing that I'd like to point out, though, is this advanced options here. Folks can easily miss this because it is collapsed right now. If you click on the little plus, you can see here that you get a additional options here as far as first off uh, your color space also to the resolution of pixels per inch but one thing that a lot of folks miss is down here fill with what does it mean when it says background color if I go ahead and zoom out for a minute it's referencing what you have set up up here in the left hand corner. So right now, if I told it fill with the background color, it's going to fill with black. However, if I zoom back in here, you can click on this drop down and you can actually change if you wanted a foreground color, if you wanted white. For most of the work that I do, especially when it comes to 2D games or anything like that, I want transparency because I don't want it to look like a box, especially if I'm going to have it be a circle or something that isn't a square. So I'm going to click on transparency and I'm going to tell it OK. So now that we've done that, I just want to kind of bump over here so you can see this. For those who haven't worked in this type of software before, the checkerboard is the most common means of denoting to us that it is transparent. That is the idea that nothing is there. Now to also take you through the interface, now that we have added and opened a new file, first off, come back over to the layers panel and you'll notice that I have a background layer. Again, every single time that you make some sort of file, it is going to make a background layer for you. You can add, you can either draw in the background layer or you can add additional layers. That's a personal preference. A lot of folks from previous versions of Photoshop, when we used to create files and the background would be locked, it was a force of habit that we would just make a new layer. That's not so much the case anymore. Another thing just to point out as far as the upper left hand corner here, is right here. This is kind of like the filing, the file tab system. I could actually make more files if I wanted to, and they would tab across the top here. So then I can flip flop between them. So it's not a matter that I can only have one file open. Now for demonstration's sake, the first thing I'm going to do, and the first thing that you should do as good practice, is save your working file. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to save. Let me zoom out here. Now, when you're saving a file, notice first off, the default file extension for a GIMP file is .xcf. And the big question is now, from an organizational standpoint, where am I going to save this at? There's a couple of options. If you're working on your own desktop or a home machine, then yeah, you could just come over here, create a folder, and save wherever. But let's say for sake of argument, though, since I had Unity open, what if this is for a 2D game and I'm working with 2D assets? I may actually want to save this instead in the Unity project so that it moves with the Unity project. For that demonstration, what I did was I opted on my desktop to generate and create my asset demo folder. 
which is the name of the Unity project. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And inside here, what Unity does as a game engine is when you select the game type, it generates a ton of folders for you. What you're looking for is the assets folder. And if I double click in here, I already have several elements here. So maybe what I do is I do create folder and I do my created stuff. And then what I'm going to name this is 2D, I don't know, picture, and we'll call it working. I like to add working so that it's easier to find for me. You don't have to do this. Again, this is my own personal naming schema. And then all you have to do is come down and there's a save button. And I'm going to go ahead and save. So I've now made a save of my file. And what I'd actually like to also show you here is if we go back into the asset demo for Unity, uh, here is that assets folder that you just saw. And notice there's that my created stuff folder. And now you can see my saved GIMP file inside there. So let's go ahead and go one step further here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the paintbrush tool. It looks like a paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is come over and I'm going to grab Wilbur. Now this is a great example here as far as working with the size. So you can kind of see the outline. Like if I were just to click right now, way too big for the size there. So I'm going to do edit and undo paintbrush. Over on the side here, I'll magnify you see how you have these different options. Probably the biggest thing you're going to want to work with with a brush is just the size. So maybe I take this to like 500. That's a little bit better there. So I should be able to kind of squeeze that in. There we go. All right, so let me zoom back out here. Yeah, that's a pretty good size. You can get as creative as you want with this. But again, my main goal is because this is an odd shape, it's not just a square. That's why I wanted that transparent background. So now I can go ahead and do File, Save. But now I'm ready to work with it inside a video game or some other element. And I'm ready to export. So I'm going to choose Export As. Now, what actually happens here is if you did this correctly, let me magnify this for you. What GIMP wants to do is it wants to save your published file in the same place that the original working file is. So I would actually maybe change the name of this from PNG to published so that I can tell the difference. So notice there it's still in the Unity project. So I can come down here and I can choose export. It saved it as a PNG. For the scope of this video, the defaults are fine. I'm going to go ahead and say export. All right, so let's take a look now back in Unity and see what we got. So there you can see now we actually have two elements going on inside of Unity here. I've got the actual PNG and I've got my working file. So now I could actually work with this and drag and drop it in as a sprite. So I could actually come in, I can scale, and this is the important element here. You see how even though it's a square, I'm not actually seeing a background behind it. Again, because in GIMP I chose that transparency, that carried over with the PNG file type. And that's just an overview to get you started hopping between the two software packages. Now, if you were just working strictly from a 2D artwork standpoint, you could just make a brand new file folder. So for instance, I could maybe say file, save as. I could come back to desktop and create folder and call this, I don't know, um, Wilbur practice. And we could call this Wilbur working. I don't even need to save it as far as the actual Unity project goes. I can save these alone. 
My biggest advice, however, overall, when you are working with both of these software packages is definitely save that working file, which is the one you see here. And whenever you make a published version or an exported version, make sure you still have that working file as far as the .xcf somewhere that if you need to you know, tweak a mistake such as a spelling error or something along those lines, you're able to get back into the file and make those changes.